I'm Brad Templeton from Robocars.com. Recently, I took a ride in a Waymo robotaxi in San Francisco with nobody in the driver's seat. With me on the ride was Andrew Chatham, distinguished engineer at Waymo. I worked with Chatham many years ago when I was on the early Waymo team, then called Google Chauffeur. I had not before ridden in the car with nobody in the driver's seat, so it was great to see how it had changed. I also got to have conversations with Chatham about Waymo and the technology. As you might expect, he wasn't at liberty to answer several of the questions. But you'll get a chance to see the car in action, handling the daytime streets of western San Francisco, going around double-parked cars, handling pedestrians and left turns, and many other things. There's also a text article about this ride with more details. The link is in the description, where I also talk about how my Tesla switched to the wrong side of the street, driving me to the Waymo pickup location. The Waymo ride was smooth and confident. But remember, not even a, a thousand smooth rides will prove the quality of a product. Off we go. COVID eyes. So, oh my God, there's no one in the yeah. driver's seat. Brad, whenever you're ready, just click this blue button. You don't make the people belt, huh? We do. And we do, we do, yeah. We're super naggy. Oh, so if I hadn't belted, if I clicked the button, it would have... There's like a little bit of green spirit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a little hey. cozy on yeah. me. You, right. you want a button? That's my phone. Let's go somewhere. First oh. stop, grocery. All right. Heading to grocery. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the call nice, support smooth. button to speak with a rider support agent. And you still get looks? Oh no, that was that's them. That's, 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 yeah. that's not. That's we do get looks. I would say the sunset has seen enough of us. Has it? Well, I used a little to. More jaded, but I used to have a place at, on Irving, Twenty Third. So, all right, nice nudge around. Oh. We crossed the yellow line. Very, yeah, no, jaded. quite, quite confidently, which is the important thing. So, one of the questions I. I have for everybody these days is <coughs> you got the safety going, the vehicle is safe enough that you're willing to let it out there with nobody there. So what are the blockers now? What's what's stopping this from taking over the world the way we all planned? Yeah, uh, there's a variety of things. Um, safety is not a binary thing, right? It's a well, spectrum, of and I'm still working on that as well. But you, 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 you've reached a safety level where obviously there was a board meeting where they said, <laughs> and you presented to the board and you said, if we put these vehicles out of San Francisco, you will not live, to, you will not regret this. We, we certainly feel comfortable with you, what we're doing there. And you yeah, made a case. Right, yeah. I mean, you had to have made that case and you had to have the numbers to back up the case, the yep. safety numbers, which you measured very carefully. So if we think about the other issues, um, there are operational concerns. So there can be, if something goes wrong, retrieving the vehicle, getting it out of the stuck spot in some other way. We've seen not everybody handles that as well as we might like. Um, mm -hmm. It's certainly something we spent a lot of time on and we've made big improvements, but we're not done. Um, then there's just the operational, how do you get a bunch of cars on the road? How many people does it take to do sure. that? There are lots of efforts to work on the efficiency of that. So a lot of the, the fleet tooling, um, Devo efficiency work is in my area, so something we spend a lot of time on. Whoops! I set up my camera quickly and it stopped recording for some time. We pick up later in the ride. Some of my conversation with Chatham was off topic or between friends, so I've silenced that and sped up the video there. Gary's no joke when it comes to traffic. No, no, Gary should be good. Especially if you got those. Okay, we got that. That was a little bit. Uh... Tentative incursion of the lane and then back. But, uh, so the planner now is presumably, is it machine learning involved in, in planning more? Obviously, than it, well, obviously there was no machine learning in the early days. Uh, that, obviously, yeah, in the very early days. Before, but we started before the deep learning revolution, so there was zero at some point. Well, the first thing I think that went into that I remember of machine learning going in was, uh, I'm sorry, not in the planning, it was in prediction of other vehicles and predicting was someone going to change lanes since no one uses their turn signal. And in I remember someone, planner, someone yeah. wrote, a, uh, wrote, a, wrote a machine or a machine learning predictor for that. 
was one of the first things I remember hearing about. Yeah, certainly behavior prediction is machine learning first. Um, that might even predate deep learning. Um, yeah, I think it did. Right, there, well, other it, ways it, to do it literally learning. predated in the sense of deep yeah. learning dates from uh, from some time ago, but the, the, well, the, but the like, new revolution yeah, of deep yeah, learning. The big switch. Um, I am not sure exactly how we talk about the planner architecture at this point publicly. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, yeah, don't say the secrets. No. No, we have uh, a new planner. Hopefully that wasn't a secret that there was... That but you might know. Why, no, we can we... confirm that we have a new planner and it's um, ML, powered by ML. Great. Really. So, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> no, only what I can say is the important part. Yeah, so it is you much more ML-based yeah. than in the past. Well, no, that, that would be shocking if it's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it was a tough nut to crack. Right? And, there are, um, and there are TPUs in this vehicle, right? Uh, there are accelerators of some kind in this vehicle. Yeah, I'm sure you said there were TPUs at some point, but uh, okay. uh, but maybe not. Again, I'm not going to ask you to sure. confirm something about that. Well, it's, but just to go back to it, like it's definitely not straightforward to apply deep learning techniques to the motion planning problem, right? Like right. it's much more straightforward for perception, where that's basically what ImageNet was doing from day one, right? Mm -hmm. Is this a bicycle? Yes, no. <laughs> right, and that obviously everyone did that from the beginning. As you know, there are. Companies attempt to do entirely end-to-end -end yep. designs, which is interesting and possibly powerful, and uh, but at the same time much harder to verify. In terms of things, so how we do on the the temp, pretty good. Okay, we'll have to nudge out a little bit here, but we have someone. So we we'll just well, actually we're pretty good about that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's one of the things that's improved. Uh, even when I haven't been in a vehicle, I've watched the other videos, and you can see confidence improving with time. And yeah. Confidence, confidence is important. It's, um, uh, I know, actually, I saw someone from Waymo give a talk on it. They gave it a different name, but what I call uh, road citizenship, um, as being one of the blockers in the sense that, yeah, you make your vehicle safe, but if everyone's honking at you, that don't work. And uh, my Tesla definitely got honked at all the way up here. <laughs> The, um, uh, but anyway, and confidence is a big part of that because. Yeah, I imagine a lot of the things you've seen today we maybe could have done last time you were in the car, but we've done them very slowly and <laughs> you would have felt a little embarrassed well, to be in the car. So. Everyone, for very good reasons, <laughs> focused on let's make sure it's safe yeah. and then let's make it better and safer too, but definitely better. And, uh, you're also, of course, doing a lot of sim. And a lot. <laughs> yeah. But most of the sim is uh, post-perception, right? Or are you doing a fair bit of pre-perception? Yeah, we do both kinds. Well, you do uh, both, but... Right. But like, ultimately, it's like what value are you getting out of this? Is it helping you hill climb or evaluate effectively? Wow. Like. That is uh, related to scale, uh, but not an unprotected left. Yeah. Famous. Oh right, yeah. Famous thing that everyone knows is <laughs> impossible. Is impossible. Uh, that, that was a reasonable hesitation. I mean, I've often felt that robots should, since robots know their exact dimensions and also know the exact dimensions of the other vehicles, should be able to show more confidence. Actually, with unprotected lefts, that's that's one of the things that has actually surprised me, because obviously. The robot has the physics of the oncoming cars, it knows their exact velocities, and knows the vehicle's own capabilities. So it should actually be much better at estimating when it can do an unprotected left in terms of the oncoming traffic. I presume a lot of the problem comes from the pedestrian walking in the sidewalk, who might walk in the sidewalk? Or is it more than that? Uh, my, I mean, many things make unprotected left turns difficult. Um, my impression is that just long as this perception and occlusions ends up being a big part of it. So well, occlusions, well, I mean, but humans have to deal with occlusions, of course. Right, well, humans take risks when they make unpredictable left turns. Well, right, that's, <coughs> that is the question. Humans are willing to take more risks than companies are. Oh. And, uh, but in order to be a road citizen, you have to drive like a human. All right, well, now we're not in the highest traffic part of town, but that's yes. okay. Oh, oh, this is our destination. Yeah, this is our another pullover. We're at the University of San Francisco. Oh, okay. And, then and we're not, so we're not going to enter this space, but we'll, You're we'll sort of partly Please enter it. Make sure it's we'll clear go to the next stop, and we'll go and get some ice cream. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Do 
I've brought my four-year-old a couple of times, and he is endlessly fascinated by the screens. Uh, are these? They're not showing exactly the same thing. That one's got, uh, or maybe it's the same thing in different aspect ratio. Uh, they are slightly different, but yeah, most of the same. Yeah, well, I'm sure you've met this, fight, this guy, Joel Ricks, who seems to love running around and making videos. I've certainly seen him on Reddit. Yeah. I haven't met him in person. But, uh, yeah, he, well, he eventually worked out, you know, he's got, he comes in, he straps in cameras for everything. Yeah, and yeah. Does a good job. Does a good job. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately for you, he happened to be in the car during a, a fun mistake by the remote ops team. I heard that. Yes. Anyway, no need to talk about that. <laughs> I already asked them whether they, 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 they not, that's not the favorite topic of the <laughs> PR department, is that sort of incident. Nor does Cruz enjoy talking about now the... The incidents that they've had where they're just stalling in the middle of the street. Although some of them I thought were, they must have had a, some really stupid bugs. Others were understandable. But, alright, so we're coming down the hill here. Uh, as everyone says, the important thing is that it becomes unremarkable. Oh, here we have to do the impossible again. <laughs> Well, you are, oh, we are doing an object left, yeah. okay. But, oh, we have a light, though, but, but we're going to get a nice big gap here, so it's not really going to have a problem with this one, I don't think. And moved it quickly. Very good. I had a dog get really mad at the car. Oh, yeah. It was very clearly barking at the driver's seat. Did not like what it was saying. One thing that's not happening the way I predicted is mm -hmm. that you and, and Cruz are building out in the same cities, in Phoenix and San Francisco. They're doing Austin. I don't think you're doing Austin. I know you're doing, I know you're testing LA and New York, but I don't know if you if you're Well, we've done Austin in the past, right? That's where we did the Yeah, first but actually man. operating there. They're going to sure. operate there by the end of the month, they say. We'll see. Uh, I sort of predicted that when it came time for deployment, people would say, why go to a city where someone else is? Why, don't, why not go to a city we can own? And then if he's in that city, we'll pick a different city. Unless it's like, well, San Francisco is the jewel, though. It's where both companies are headquartered. So mm -hmm. it makes natural sense. And Phoenix was also an effort by the government to basically not get in the way there, which drew everyone there. All right, tour bus. Okay, the tourists are better going to take pictures of us. They, they, they get more excited, that's right. They, if, they, they, if they notice. Yeah. Actually, well, their tour guide, he's definitely <laughs> looking at us, so he should... That, I've done that one that's automated, so... The guy's just a bus driver. There's a pre-recorded... Well, no, there's a guy standing up. Oh, oh that one actually has a tour guide? Okay, when I did it, it was Maybe just it's a tour guide taking yeah. his tour. But they weren't looking at us, so maybe yeah. he didn't think... I would say this would be one of the top things you don't see in other cities. That's... Uh, other than Phoenix. No? Yes, yeah, yeah. Should be Phoenix. All right, so, well, we haven't seen really heavy traffic here, but it's, uh, or a really heavy, heavy duty pedestrian.
but yeah, I mean, it's it, to to rev this up is uh, I mean, to, we talk about Tesla a lot, but one, if they actually could pull off making their system work on their stock vehicle, uh -huh. that would give them a huge advantage in deployment. They'd have millions of vehicles already there. Of course, that's a big if. Yes, if I had a magic wand, all sorts of things would be possible. <laughs> well, I mean, so it looks like I'm going to guess that they will retrofit my car with a new radar. Uh, whether their radar and CV will be enough is, it, it's probably enough for, like, highway driving. L2? No, 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 no. Oh. Four. There is no three. You're here. Please make sure it's... If you've ever read my stuff, I always I, yeah. talk about how the levels are this stupid idea the government made up and not something anybody in the business really wanted. We refer to it. Well, because it's a taxonomy that got out there, because yeah. the government and SE put it out there. Uh, but a lot of the challenge with like actually doing L4, removing the driver from the front seat, feeling confident about that is redundancy, right? Like, yep. As you well know, having a cool demo that works well enough to record a 30-minute video takes you a couple of quarters. <laughs> Uh, maybe made lot. more than a couple quarters. Well, it's, it's a, a competent team we saw can, a lot can of make those. it happen. Yeah, it's not it's not trivial. No. But a competent team can make it happen. Um, but like actually feeling confident that you can remove the driver's seat, do this on a regular basis during broad daylight, like, somewhat. Oh, oh there no. you go. There you go. You were too slow. We were correctly yielding to a pedestrian in a crosswalk. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the dreaded honk. Yeah. Now that's an interesting question. Has is there anything in the system when it hears a honk that acts differently? Uh, I believe there's honk detection, but I have no idea what happens with it. I mean, it's, um, you know, obviously you obviously shouldn't respond if there's a pedestrian in the crosswalk. And we got a Parker. And now it could have come, could have moved a little faster on this one. Like this, maybe they're just being cautious about the fact that dark is moving. No, it's a four-way or a three-way. Easy. Plus. We're now getting back to the rituals coffee. Okay. We'll be there in about three minutes. All right, the Uber is going to present. Okay, which is how we can change change the comment and music. Do you want to switch? That is the cast. Yeah. Play some music. Oh, we've got around the Uber well enough. In fact, I was looking at the screen. You distracted yeah, sorry, me. Yeah. Cleverly distracted me. And, uh, and then, uh, now, are you not? You're not showing him in the visual, or, or that's yeah, him in the visualization yeah. here? Okay. You don't visualize him as more than a, an icon. Yeah, it's the, the UI is optimized for human consumption. It's not necessarily exactly what we're reacting to, but closely correlated. The dreaded speed bumps, which of course robots don't need because they're going to obey the rules, or at least what the agreed upon rules. I'm not sure how much has gotten talked about, but like one one of the things we've added to the UI over the last year, I think, is a better explanation of when we do things that might be surprising. Oh yeah, you put. Up, I yeah. did see that on some vids. I think of it of it saying what's going on. Right. Because eventually you just start looking at your phone, and then your head pops up when. Why? Why? It why? Slows why, down. You're like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. We saw a radar ghost. <laughs> you wouldn't say that. Usually we saw a pedestrian, but. <laughs> Well, them, uh, there are going to be the there's going to be occasional false positives. Uh, Did you catch them waving at the <laughs> driver? I saw them wave, yeah, yeah, the driver. I uh, no, what was I? What was I in the middle of, of talking about? Um, oh, I mean, almost there. Don't forget your belongings. The original car, as you will remember, had a little dial in it where you could change the speed and make it faster than the speed limit, which oh, is not right. not here anymore. But uh, I do believe vehicles have to go faster than the speed limit in order to be good road citizens in a lot of situations. So I don't know if there's been any more discussion about how to solve that problem. 
I, again, don't know what we're saying okay. on that particular point, so... Oh, we're, we're doing, this is very oddly, okay. That's yeah. not what a human would do. They're sliding back into the lane. Was, yeah. uh, more aggressive than probably a human. I mean, remember. I and I think everyone else I know happily drives over the lane markers. There's no one else around if yeah. it makes a more comfortable drive. I guess I would ask, if we were stuck with that behavior forever, would it bother you that much? <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it depends if it, uh, again, if I'm staring at my phone, unnecessary turns are a negative. Yeah, that's true. Um, <coughs> I want the, uh... Alrighty, so, it's gonna, oh, well, there's nowhere for it here. Yeah. You do what you gotta do. So what's it gonna try and do? Is it gonna try and go into this bike parking? See the text article for more details and subscribe to get more articles about self-driving cars and electrification in the future. I'm Brad Templeton.